Hey there, this is the one boom, and after my last video I realized, damn, the comments section sure is a pointless place. So many people misunderstood my video, so many people don't know the difference between subjective experience and preference, and the objective content inside of a product. So many people seem to be so narcissistic, they can't look and see that another group of people might be enjoying something that they're not. Like, here's a big surprise for some of you. There are people that enjoy other shooters that you don't enjoy. So, when somebody's talking about the quality or quantity of content in a shooter you don't enjoy, you might have to maybe take a deep breath and think of other people before writing comments about how stupid they are for enjoying something you don't happen to be in the mood for. I would love to say that my comment section is passionate or opinionated, but on my last video it seemed like a bunch of people that have to ask for permission to get up from the dinner table getting angry at me for not liking their favorite toy. I've said this before in previous videos, sometimes it feels like people are angry at a game that I like. Okay, fair enough. But other times it feels like people are angry at me for liking a game that I enjoy. And, whoo, that's, that's something I have no patience for. Being mad at me for my video game preferences is like going to Walmart and being mad that they sell clothes that don't fit you. I am not you. I'm not even a team of people. I am one person, one microphone, one computer, one Xbox, and I only have so many hours in the day. I cannot spend all of my time writing commentaries just choosing the perfect right words and sentences so that I don't trigger a panic attack in the comments section. My video about Call of Duty Vanguard has two giant misunderstandings or missed points about it that really bother me, and I'm gonna just get them out here in the open. First things first, I was talking about the product. What you get for your money, what you get for your time, is better in Vanguard compared to 2042 and Halo Infinite. That doesn't mean you're going to prefer it, but if you are a Call of Duty fan and you're craving a Call of Duty experience, you see, this is how products work. You like the games you're in the mood to play. You like the franchises you're in the mood to buy into. If you do not want to play COD, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm only stating some facts mixed in with my subjective experience and opinion. Again, other people aren't you. I'm sorry if you feel like Vanguard is a broken piece of unplayable, derivative, regressive garbage, but to a Call of Duty fan who likes the experience of learning new maps and leveling up weapons and grinding for gold camo and going on kill streaks. Um, it's great. Oh, then oh, then you add in running around in circles shooting zombies and beating campaigns that are essentially big dumb blockbuster movies. If you can't understand why somebody would like that this year, then you need to stop taking all of your opinions from the internet. That's what I meant in my last video about you can't believe everything you hear. What that really means is the common consensus doesn't account for your personal preferences and what might end up surprising you. I was very apprehensive and negative about Sledgehammer making a World War II COD up until I actually sunk some hours into it, and then I was a little bit smitten, and mostly a little surprised. But so many people out there are coming to channels like this to either be told what they already think or to grab an opinion and use it as their own. But I encourage you as your fellow man, please think for yourself and process the nuances amongst things yourself. Don't go scream and throw your fucking shit at the wall because somebody doesn't like a game you like. And now here's the meat of this video. I love Halo Infinite, and it'll be easier to love Halo Infinite over time. Vanguard over time, yes, we'll get more content and I'll keep playing it, but Vanguard will be dead by next winter. By next winter, I'll be playing a new Call of Duty by my favorite Call of Duty dev studio in my favorite time period to have a Call of Duty game. I'm going to be getting Modern Warfare 2. That's the second point that flew over people's heads. Yeah. Vanguard wins! But by the time it's dead, Halo Infinite might be a giant in the industry if it isn't already right now. This is, in my opinion, the worst Halo release ever, but the reason I call it a sleeping failure is because everybody's too busy having fun to care. Now that's a good and a bad thing. If you're just a casual player, it's great, you're having fun. But if you're a commentator, like me, I feel some sort of obligation to say, Hey guys, you know, this isn't very good, this could be a lot better, you know, I know we're all having fun, I know the game's good, but you gotta hear me out, it's also a tad shit. 
Infinite is a game in progress. We're waiting for campaign DLCs, we're waiting for maps, we're waiting for modes, we're waiting for more avenues of progression, we're waiting for a better update to the progression system. It's just waiting, waiting for Forge, waiting for a firefight, waiting for co-op. It's just waiting the game. I see so many cosmetic items that I would love to play around with that I just can't, and it breaks my heart. More so than if Vanguard did something dumb or Battlefield. I mean, those games could upset me, they could frustrate me, but only Halo can break my heart. I've joked in the past that Black Ops 3 broke my heart, but that was Treyarch trying something really new and weird. Infinite is 343 perfecting, in many ways perfecting, the Halo experience, but because of its lack of content, it makes me want to go play the MCC. Because Halo Infinite brings some classic Halo experiences to the new age, but if I go play MCC, I get tons of maps, tons of experiences. I can go play co-op campaigns with my friends. I can replay my favorite missions, and then I go to Halo Infinite, and I have one completed normal difficulty save, and I guess I could start a heroic one and stream it. That could be fun, but this game should have taken over my winter, but instead it's something I'm hoping will be much better by next winter. Next winter, when this game's been a year old, I've already gotten used to its mechanics and design choices, while a brand new Call of Duty game comes out within my favorite sub-franchise, Modern Warfare. And that makes me sad. This game could have taken over my winter. This game could have been the biggest release of the year, but instead of it being a premium, packed game, full of love, full of attention, it is a live service ecosystem. Halo would have sold at $60, especially if the reviews came out and people found out how loaded with content it was. But if this, in its current state, would have launched for $60, it would have been a debacle. It would have been a scandal. The only pass this game gets is that it's free. But free does not mean good. Halo used to live up to its premium price tag, and now it doesn't get anywhere near it. Halo Infinite is my favorite shooter of the year that I just simply have so much trouble loving. When I'm in a match and it's going well and I'm having fun, it's going well and I'm having fun, but the moment the game starts to frustrate me, all of these feelings of why is this game the way it is? Why isn't there a good progression system? Why wasn't there co-op campaign at launch? Why can't I make maps with my friends? Where's the firefight? Where is the Halo experience that I'm accustomed to? And what sucks is that the MCC has hurt Halo Infinite so bad because you can easily on Game Pass go into the MCC, load up Halo Reach or Halo 3, and you can just see how much content people had back then. And you might think, well, that was back then, the industry changed. Yeah, that's my point. The industry changed, yet Vanguard came out. Vanguard feels like Modern Warfare 3 felt. Tons of maps, tons of weapons, a side mode, and a campaign. That feels great. The side mode needs work, but I'm glad it's the side mode that needs work, not the main course. Vanguard fans are waiting for zombies to get better. In my opinion, a Halo Infinite fan, speaking from the perspective of one, I'm waiting for the entire game to be better. Go ahead, give me the best moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in a shooter ever, and then make me play the same seven standard maps and same three big team battle maps over and over, and see how far you get. Make the only progression system in that game a challenge-based battle pass that still costs $10 to get any decent amount of content. Lock my favorite armors from my childhood like Hazop behind a paywall in the store and see how long I grind you. The reason I'm playing Vanguard, despite Halo Infinite in my opinion being, in many ways, the better experience, is that when I play Vanguard, I get the Call of Duty experience, which I'm a fan of, sue me, and I'm leveling up guns and progressing my operators. I'm unlocking new cosmetics like takedowns, assassinations, camos, charms. Yeah, it's mostly dumb little things, but I mean, all of Halo Infinite's progression is dumb little things. Halo used to live up to its price tag. It currently doesn't. What's so controversial about that? It's not to say it's not fun or it's not enjoyable. It's that it doesn't live up to its predecessors. It doesn't live up to its legacy as a staple Xbox franchise. Now everybody's just sort of waiting for the next big update. Everyone's waiting for the next big content drop. 
So yeah, Infinite's my favorite game that came out this year, but it's not gonna be my most played for a while. See you when I see you. Goodbye.